there is only one perfect solution, but there are clues that will try to trick our team. Hello there, everyone. My name is Crazy Caleb, and today we're going to be continuing on with our Not Modded Module series. And today we're going to be taking a look at Not Coordinates. So, this is another Not Modded Module, and there is a huge difference from uh, Coordinates, in this case, the one module made by Tim Lee, and Not Coordinates, the module made by Speaking Evil. So, the first thing that you're immediately going to notice with Not Coordinates is the fact that there are now a lot of coordinates present in this display. That you have to cycle through. Whereas in not, whereas in the normal coordinates, uh, the way that you can distinguish this is the fact that there is indeed a um, starting position to determine the grid size. In this case, for example, 4x7 will determine your grid size. For not coordinates, it will always be a 9 by 9 grid, regardless of whatever uh, positions you get. So what exactly is our goal with not coordinates here? Our goal is each display corresponds to a, new, to a unique position in the grid, and three of the positions lie on three vertices of a square within the grid. And what we were going to do is we're going to submit the three displays that correspond to those positions. Now, let's get some terminology straight. Uh, first off, what's a square? Uh, a square has equal sides on all areas, so it can look something like this. It can look something like this. For example, we could go down uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, and then back up to the here. It can look like that, or it can really screw with you, and it can look like this. Alpha 7, India 3, Charlie 1, and Golf 9. This is a square. <laughs> this is exactly what this module asks for you to look for. Um, these different types of squares, it, it will not always necessarily be this difficult, but this is what makes this module so tricky is because of examples like these, where simply the square, um, the way that you can tell that it is a square is because of the fact that you can do a specific transformation. You can do um, a specific direction in two, and then going the uh, going in another direction, in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six directions. And this can be applied here. So we can go up from this two right here, and then left six to the three. We can go up two from the four, going left uh, to left six to the one. We can go to the right two from the one, and then go up six to the three, and so on and so forth. And that makes the square. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to use these two examples to graph out each of these um, each of these positions, and let's see if we can find the square. Please note that this does this may or may not take a little while, so bear with me on that once we figure out all of our coordinates that we graph. And the maximum amount of um, not coordinates, the most I've had personally, the most I've had for each um, coordinate count is 16. However, the um, interactive manual goes up to 15. In most cases, you're going to end up looking at 15 or 14 examples. Uh, it's very rare that you have a 16 example, so just a heads up on that. And it is important to note that each of these um, grid uh, position formats are similar to the original coordinates manual. So we have um, we have angle brackets, we have letter number, we have angle brackets, um, we have uh, nothing with it, just a comma. Then we have parentheses, we have letter dash number, uh, quotation marks, slash, uh, single square bracket uh, compared to x y square bracket. Uh, scan line order, which in this case is something like 23rd, 15th, etc., etc. Then hash, whatever the number is. Then Chinese reading order. Then we have two new ones. We have uh, the cardinal x cardinal is actually the, is actually not a new one, but the cardinal from cardinal is the new one here. And what this means is the second cardinal is relative to the, is the relative position of the three by three subgrid from the center. The first cardinal is the relative position of the cell from the center of the subgrid. So what exactly does that mean? So in this case, let's take, for example, we have northwest from west. That's what one example can look like here. So looking at this grid here, we can simply break these guys up into three by three uh, little subgroups here. And that is the way that this is going to look for the entire module. Uh, so in this case, northwest from west. So west is going to be the subgrid that we're looking at here. This little subgrid right here. And northwest, in this case, from the center of this position will take us to right there. And that is what northwest from west will look like. And thankfully enough, for the Chinese reading order, we have provided the, um, the Chinese uh, numerals down here at the bottom. 
So let's actually get into the first part of this module. So let's move it down here. So let's take a look. Let's do this interactively, but we're going to note down the starting position that we start on so we don't lose track of uh, what coordinates and positions we need to be um, input on the grid here that we have. So we're going to start at Charlie dash four. Charlie dash four, in this case, is going to correspond to the column, then the row, and the bottom left starting is going to be alpha one. So uh, it is very important that you actually know coordinates in this uh, beforehand in order to even understand this module, because this is advanced. So I'm going to leave a link to the coordinates tutorial in the description. I would advise you to go learn this first before learning not coordinates. It is a lifesaver, but if you want to be bold like that, by all means, be my guest. Make sure this is recording. It is indeed. So for our first one, Charlie dash four, we're going to start at the bottom left. In this case, being alpha one, and we're going to do, we're going to do the column first. So in this case, alpha one will be down here, and we're going to go up to um, column. In this case, column Charlie. And we're going to go right to right to Charlie, and then we're going to go up to row four, and in this case, that will be number one. So we're going right to the eighth. Eighth in this case uh, corresponds to the uh, scan line order, and top left in this case is the first. So for those of you who aren't familiar, scan line is simply, for example, the way that you would read a book. It would be like this, following the yellow um, icon, looping around to the left side. So from left to right, and then top to bottom. So uh, this is the eighth. Um, we're looking for the eighth position. So in this case, uh, starting from the top left is one. So we're going to count eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And eight will be our second position. In this case, it is important to note that you can potentially get larger numbers with this. So it's very important that you know your multiples of nine in this case to be a lifesaver on this module. So in this case, we would simply start from the end over here. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. We can start from here and we can do nine, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, uh, 63, 72, and 81 to help us simply navigate this module a little bit better. Same thing can be done from bottom to top if you happen to get Cartesian order, and same thing with Chinese reading order, which is top right going down. But more on that later. Our next example, Hotel 8. There is no dash in between this. Make sure you specify that when you're doing this module. In this case, it's going to be column and then row. The top left is alpha 1. So in this case, um, column, column hotel, in this case is 8. And then row is going to go down to here, number three. Next up, the 28th position, as I said before, the simply uh, scan line order. Let's take a look here. So we can do 9, 18, 27, and then the next one will be 28. So that means it'll be right over here. All right, next, next example. So angle brackets 7, 8. Angle bracket 7, 8, row then column, top left is 0, 0. In this case, um, the top left being 0, 0. Uh, let's do row. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then column. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And that will be it. In this case, these are Chinese numerals. And for those of you who aren't familiar with how Chinese numerals work, in this case, this first example is a 10. And uh, for the like the, what I call is the cross, essentially. And this one I call the window because it looks like a window, and this case is a 4. And what this means is it is a simply a 10 and a 4. However, what this means is this is simply 14, because those numbers combine together. So now, uh, 14 in Chinese reading order is going to be looking like this. Uh, Chinese reading order is essentially taking a look at this. You start at the top right in this case, which is the um, single vertical line. Top right is 1 in this case. And you're simply going to go um, start from the top right and then go down each column, looping back to the top for each time. So it's in this case, it's top to bottom and then right to left. So that's how this module works. So, that, so that's how these, uh, this grid format works. So we're going to start at 1. And then what we can do is simply um, move to the left, um, move down here to 9. And then we can do 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And that could be, and that will be our position right there. Golf dash two will be our next position. Uh, column then row. Bottom left is alpha one. I'm going to pick it up a little bit because the co the concept of coordinates. Hopefully you understand how this module works. So let's get to the end when we have all of our uh, <coughs> when we have all of our coordinates uh, in the grid. 
In this case, golf dash two, column then row, bottom left is alpha one. <coughs> uh, column seven, then two, right there. Uh, Chinese 13 in this case, which will be simply one up from before. Uh, in this case, this is another uh, example of Chinese reading order. This, in this case, corresponds to 4, then 10, then 2, which in this case represents 42, because simply this is four, like this is 4 times 10, and then we're simply adding 2. So in this case, giving us a Chinese reading order of 42. So now remember, it starts at the top right, which is 1. We can simply go down to 9 at the bottom right, in this case, and move across each column, counting by 9s. So 9, 18, 27, 32... I mean, excuse me, 36, uh, and then 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. And that's our position right there. Uh, parentheses, 5, comma, 7, column, then row, bottom left is 0, 0. So column, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then row 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so there we go. Foxtrot dash seven, excuse me, not dash seven, Foxtrot seven. Uh, column then row, top left is alpha one. So column six, and then row seven. This will be Chinese, in this case, uh, 10 plus the nine, so 19. So then we can do nine, then 18, and then 19 right up here. Angle bracket 19, simply just by itself. This is scan line order again, but the top left is now zero in this case. So it's, it's zero oriented. So what this means is that nine will simply be the next the next row below it. So nine, then 18, then 19 right here. Now we have Chinese uh, 6D, uh, 65 in this case, 65 for Chinese uh, reading order. So 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, <coughs> 54, 63, 64, 65. Okay, angle bracket 8. Cell is in scan line order, top left is, is 0. So in this case, that's simply going to be the end of this row right here. And just like that, we're back to Charlie 4. So now that we have all of our, uh, all of our positions uh, noted down, let's simply figure out where the square is. And this is the part that's probably the trickiest of the entire module, is just simply figuring out where the square is. So let's take a look around. And this is the part where you watch me look. So there's not really much else to it. But it is important to note that you will not form a perfect square with this because of the fact you're only looking for three displays, because the fourth one is going to be used in a later step. So let's take a look around. Let's see here. Instead of, wait, instead of watching you guys mum, me mumble and jumble, I'm going to pause the recording, and I will get back to you when I have my answer. Okay, I'm back. So that took about that took about a minute for me. This was an easy example. So in this case, what we can actually do is take a look here. So we have um, coordinates 6, 5, and 9. And the way that we can take a, look at, take a look at this is we can take a look at up, right, right, right. Then we can do right, down, down, down. Then we can simply do down, left, left, left. And then what we can do is left, up, up, up. And just like that is our square. So starting from position one, which was Charlie four, let's go to five, six, and ninth coordinate. Uh, so one, two, uh, so, so one, two, three, four, five, we'll hit submit, and six. And just like that, it hasn't given a strike. If you happen to submit a wrong coordinate, it will immediately give you a strike, not after all three of them. So we suggest submitted six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, before we get before we get in any further into this module, I'm going to note down the position of the last coordinate where it would normally be at, in this case, for the square. So the missing coordinate in this case would be A, B, C, D, E, F, Foxtrot nine in this case. And we're gonna save that for the second step. And so let's submit the ninth position. There is only one perfect solution. Now, <clears throat> will try to trick our team. and now we enter into the second stage of this module, which is simply a parody of double O if you think about it like this. So it's 
So what we're going to be taking a look at is these different sets of shapes. And what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to the cell where the fourth vortex of the square that was not originally displayed is located and submit that display shape. So this is why I note down, so, so this is why I noted down Foxtrot 9. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this grid here, which also iconically happens to be a 9 by 9 grid. And we're simply going to uh, note down that position and find this in the grid. So in this case, A, B, C, D, E, F, all the way down to 9. And what we need to do is we need to get to that position. However, just like in double O, each of the buttons will simply navigate you to a random cell in some specific way. So currently we are on a square ticket as our two sides. So we're right here up in the um, top right section uh, from the left. So now, taking a look here, each of the following actions toggles the display in one of the following ways, wrapping around uh, the edges of the grids slash subgrids, similar to double O. I will also leave a link for that, uh, for that tutorial in the description as well. So we simply can press the, um, the left side both on even and odd, and the left side and the right side on even and odd. And it, what it will do is it will move the cell um, one in each position respectively. For those of you who aren't familiar with double O, <clears throat> it can move the position up or down, uh, wrapping around if you press it at the same time. Um, uh, left, uh, in, in this is within the same grid. Uh, it can move up or down within the same grid right here, as so. It can move left or right within the same grid. It can stay in the same position within each subgrid, but move between the bigger grids, so it can move up and down like this, or left and right like this. And this is the way the module works. So now what we need to do is we need to figure out how each of these buttons operate, um, left being on even, last digit being even, and, and right being on even or odd, and we need to figure out how to get to our specific position. It is also important to note that some of the cells cause the display to glitch, obscuring the left and or right side of the display's shape. So in this case, that happens randomly, and sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. But what you must do is you must be able to figure out your position um, based off of cycling it through um, these guys. So. This module should be pretty, uh, this part of the module should be pretty straightforward and you should be able to get a guaranteed answer. You shouldn't be able to just submit all willy nilly. Just make sure that you're on the cell that you need to land on by the time you get there. So let's take a look here. So um, even left in this case, let's see where this takes us. So in this case, as we can see here, the cell is glitching out. So we actually don't know where we're at currently right now. So let's do even left again and see if we can get the perfect shape. In this case, we can. So in this case, what we can actually uh, see here is pressing uh, even left twice moved us a, in a small left, as I refer to it. So it moved us small left in the grid. And just to make sure, we, if we remember from the previous press, we had the, um, I wouldn't describe this as ticket, but rather pointed, um, a pointed side on the right side that was not glitching out. That means we can confirm that it was moving a small left in this grid right here. So, and just to make sure, if we click even left again, it takes us back to our starting position. In this case, if pressing it three times in a row, regardless of whatever press you do it in, as long as it's the same press on an even or odd seconds, it will always bring you back to the position that you were at before, just to help you that you don't get lost. So now let's do even, um, let's do uh, even right, which takes us to, uh, we don't know quite yet, but it could potentially be um, this guy right here because it is looking at the flat side. Um, it is flat, completely flat, rectangle flat. Um, and if we click even uh, right again, it takes us to the left side being sort of this pointed, um, two arrows pointing inwards right here with the right side glitching out. And if we click even left again, excuse me, not even left. I did not mean to click even left, so let's click even left again, and again. Take this back to that position. Let's click even right one more time. And it will take us back to our starting position. So I, with the information that has been given to me, am inclined to believe that even right will take us to um, big lefts in this case, as I refer to. Because simply what we're doing is we're taking, we're moving in the same position in the smaller grid, but we're moving positions in the bigger 3x3 grid in this case. So uh, now that we've determined that, 
what we need to do is we need to get this guy to the bottom right using the rest of our commands because simply we need to our best bet would be to press even right getting us big left one time to get us over to this guy right here even uh, right will take us there now let's press odd left and see where that takes us so odd left will take us to here it will take us to pointed inwards and it will take us to almost like a ticket as well, which in this case goes up. So that means we're looking at a small lock in this case for odd left. Now for our last one, even, uh, excuse me, odd right, it should take us either big, um, big up or big down. Now let's press um, odd right. So in this case, it takes us to this guy right here because we've deduced that this is on the left. We do we have deduced that based off of the previous presses, it has to be big up or big down. That's the way the double O works. It always will give you a um, an option to go left or right in the smaller grid, up or down in the smaller grid, left or right in the bigger three by three grid, or up and down in the uh, up or down in the three in this in the bigger three by three grid. That's the way that this module works. So we are currently right here because this left side is um, sort of circled inwards and then circles back outwards. Some of these descriptions I don't know how to describe. It's up to you to describe how you want to uh, uh, to describe them for one another. Now what we can do is we can press on right again because it went big down from the position that we were at beforehand to get us down into the smaller grid that we need to be at. So let's do on right, which will take us down to here. And note that this, these, uh, this symbol on the right is similar to this position on the right in here. So that means we're at the right position. So now let's take a look here. So if we press, for example, uh, even left, which will take a small left, that will take us to right there. Let's press that, even left. Both of the symbols are glitching, so we actually don't know if that's the correct um, position that we're at. But based off of our knowledge from beforehand, we have to, we have to say it's correct because of what we determined beforehand. And now what we can do is we can press odd left, which will take us to small up, which will take us to our final position that we need to submit on. So odd left. And just like that, we have reached our final destination. It's not glitching out. And we have the exact same symbol as Foxtrot 9. So now what we can do is we can hit the submit button. Double O will appear and the module will solve. And just like that is a solved module. Let's take a look at one final example because this module is pretty straightforward with regards to how the work works. The hardest part of it comes down to the grid itself and finding that square. In this example, obviously, it's very tricky to sort of look past all of these guys, um, all of the positions that we graphed beforehand. But once you get an understanding of how this module works, it becomes really simple, or in case it's, it's like finding a needle in a haystack. So let's reset the entire module. Let's clear our notes, clear our example. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply just going to solve the other coordinates back here. Just because I'm lazy. So coordinates, in this case, it's 2, comma 0, and hash 3. All right. Now taking a look at this next example. And I would like to point out that I didn't actually look at the log for the uh, example of not coordinates. When I paused the video, I got lucky and I managed to find it within like the first minute or so. So. Just a little bit of luck based. I'm not using the log file to find my answer and cheat because that's, I'm not a cheater. So let's take a look at our final example here. We're gonna start from uh, one comma six. Let me turn down the game uh, music, please. Let's take a look here. So we have uh, angle uh, parentheses one comma six as our starting position. And let's take a look here. So parentheses one comma six, column then row, bottom left is zero, zero. Let's speed through this. So uh, bottom left, zero, zero, column, then row, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Angle brackets, uh, excuse me, not angle brackets, uh, quotation marks, um, one comma six. Row, then column, bottom left is zero, uh, zero, zero. So row, then column, up there, uh, two. And in this case, this is exactly what I mean by cardinal from cardinal. So northwest from southeast. So we're going to take a look at the southeast um, three by three grid, and we're going to move from the center of that grid northwest. 
And that's and that will be our point that we're graphing it there. 5 slash 5, row then column, bottom left is zero, 0 is 1, 1. Uh, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5. Alpha 4. Column then row, top left is alpha 1. So column then row, 1, 2, uh, 2, 3, 4 rather. Um, 5, comma 8, nothing else. Row then column, top left is 1, 1. So in this case, uh, row then column, top left is 1, 1. Uh, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Angle bracket 3, comma, uh, excuse me, quotation marks 3, comma, 7. I don't know why I wanted to say angle bracket so bad. Um, quotation marks 3, comma, 7. Row then column, bottom left is 0, 0. So um, row then column, bottom left is 0, 0. Um, in this case, so starting from here, uh, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, northeast from northeast. So looking at northeast uh, sector right here, um, this will be where we begin at, at the northeast coordinate. And what we're going to do is move northeast to 8 right there. Uh, quotation marks 4, 3. Row then column bottom left is 0, 0. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. 4, 3. Uh, row then column top left is 1, 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. Oh, and right here, actually, we already found our, we found, we already found our square right here. In this case, they happen to be all together perfectly, and we actually can just simply avoid the rest of the coordinates here. So we can simply submit 4, 3. Then we go back to, um, ang uh, to the quotation marks, 4, 3. That was the previous one we had before, which was 9. And why would that be? Excuse me. Um, that might be the wrong one that I looked at here. Let me make sure I did this right. Um, but obviously it's gonna it's gonna include the four comma three. So let's take a look here. Uh, quotation marks four comma three. In this case, starting from bottom left, row then column one two three four one two three. So it could be that I did something wrong here. Um, not exactly sure why this is wrong. I could have just jumped to conclusions. That's my bad. And let's continue on. Uh, so, but we do know for a fact that it, it does indeed involve four comma three by accidental submission. So let's just ignore that though. So in this case, um, parentheses, column, uh, or at least two comma eight. Column, then row, bottom left is zero, zero. So column, then row, bottom left is zero, zero. So column, uh, 1, 2, then up to 8, 78th. So now we're going to do scanline order, top link, starting at the top left first. And then we're going to do 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, uh, 54, 63, 72, uh, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78. Uh, northwest from northeast. So going up to the northeast corner, uh, corner here, we're going to go northwest. Uh, 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 parentheses, 1, 6. Column, then row, bottom left is 0, 0. Column, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Hold on a second. Um, column, then row. Oh, we're back at the starting position. That's right. Okay. So now that we have everything graphed out, we know that it involves 10 somehow. Uh, and we need to figure out what our positions is that we need to figure out. So let's take a look here. So in this case, I'm going to pause it and I'm going to come back when I have my solution. I'm not going to look at the log. I promise that. Uh, crazy Caleb promise, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, I'll figure this out. Okay, so I would like to point out that I found uh, an error. I accidentally, I misclicked in this case uh, from 10. So it actually should be right here. In this case, uh, for example, let's take a look here. So top left in this case is 1, 1. So in this case, uh, we're taking a look at row 4. So in case 1, 2, 3, 4. And then 1, uh, then one, 2, and 3. So that's my bad. That's a little bit of, that's a bit of an error. But in this case, that's the reason why uh, 4, 3 is part of our answer. Because this little group right here, is our little square right here. 
So in this case, let's go back to 1, which in this case is parentheses 1, 6. And we're going to submit this guy. And then we're also going to submit our fifth, co uh, fifth coordinate that we graphed. 2, 3, 4, 5. In this case being alpha 4. All right. So now that we're on to the second stage of this module, apologies for that mistake, by the way. That normally wouldn't happen. It's just I must have misclicked along the way somehow. Um, so total, so totally my fault on that. So what we're going to do is we have our final uh, our final coordinate with the, um, the square in this case would be Bravo 5. So taking a look down here at Bravo 5, so Alpha uh, Bravo 2, 3, 4, 5. This is, what, this is going to be our endpoint. It's the sort of uh, zigzag um, end right there. And this one is the triangle pointing inwards. And that is what is going to be our answer in this case. So now let's find this one right here. We have the two triangles pointing inward in the center. And we have this sort of little circle uh, uh, opening at the center. So let's find this in the grid somewhere. Which is right here. So let's take a look here. We need to figure out what these um, arrows are going to be doing for us. So we need to do um, even and odd left. And then we need to do even and odd right. Let's figure out what these guys do. Equals, 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 and equals. So let's start off with even left and even right. So even left takes us to um, that triangle pointing inwards on the right side, on the left side rather. So in this case, that can be this guy right here, or actually it has to be that guy. There is no possible way that we can get to that other position. So in this case, this means that even left takes us to a big down. Now let's do it, take a look at odd left. In this case, that can either be this guy or that's actually the only option. So in this case, this also corresponds, this corresponds to big right. Now, now, now that we have both of our big um, coordinates, in this case being the bigger three by three grid, we simply know that right, uh, both of the rights will simply be referring to the, uh, the little individual three by three grid in this case. So um, let's take a look here. Uh, and we're actually going to do one more odd left to get over to this guy right here. And then we're going to do one more even left to get down here, just to make our life simpler and to get, and to get closer to the end destination. So let's go to um, uh, even left and then odd left. So in this case, both of our symbols are glitching, but we should be right there. Let me make sure of that. And let's hit um, even right to figure out where we're at. So in this case, that in this case would take us to down because there's no other positions that have that similar shape on the left side. And then odd right. In this case, will take us to our end destination. Since we figured out it was down, it had to be either left or right for this last press. And in this case, we know that that's our answer. So we're gonna hit submit. And just like that is a solved module. As always, thank you guys for watching. Remember to stay crazy, stay cool, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.